Uh, today we're going to be talking about classification and how it relates to biology. Biological classification, really what they do is they take all living things on the entire planet and they're trying to group them into certain categories based on their similarities. The modern way that things are classified is based on their evolutionary relationships, um, like how as time has changed over time, how closely related they are. And a lot of times they will look at an organism's DNA and analyze that to figure out how closely related the organisms are. <clears throat> the science of classifying organisms is actually has a name. It's called taxonomy. Uh, really, it's just taking things and organizing them into groups. And, and this is a man-made system, so it's constantly changing. Um, they may find a new species or they may rearrange the way the system already is. So it's not anything that's set in stone, and classification systems are constantly changing. The old classification system, an example here of how the system has changed is they used to just have two groups that everything went into. It was either a plant or an animal. And as scientists have learned more and discovered more diverse species and learned more about the species we do have, this has expanded. So now we have the new classification. And there's six main groups or kingdoms that living things will be grouped into. And just basically what they are are an animal, a plant. We also have fungi, which are mushrooms, morel, fungus. Protista would be the next one, most, mostly one-celled organisms. There are exceptions, but mostly that's what we have, eukaryotic. And then we also have bacteria, called eubacteria, and a new kingdom called archaebacteria, which is an ancient bacteria which differs from this and that these are very, very old and they have uh, evolved to basically live anywhere on the planet from like the hottest, deepest parts of the ocean to like hot springs where they can live basically anywhere. So the systems are always changing. Uh, they've added the Archaebacteria kingdom. They're constantly uh, rearranging them as they learn more. So it's a man-made system. Uh, when we classify, all living things are put into seven categories. They'll be in a kingdom, of course, but then there's more categorization after that. And here's how it's laid out. Kingdom will be the largest, and as you go down through phylum, class, order, family, genus, species, it gets to a smaller piece of the classification where species is the smallest, and on the planet there's millions and millions of different species, but only six kingdoms. Here's an example of how uh, human classification would break down, where we are in the kingdom, animal or animalia. And as we go down, we have chordata, mammalia, because we're mammals, primates, hominid, our genus is homo, and our species altogether is homo sapien. So an animal, you could group many things in animal, like fish, bears, insects, they would all be in the animal. But as you go down through this and you get the species, you end up with just one type of living thing. This is just kind of a phrase for remembering the order, uh, which would be kingdom phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. And it's just like a mnemonic device for remembering that order. We also have binomial nomenclature. And an example we have here is the word homo sapien, which is the scientific name for humans. That's called binomial nomenclature because there's always two words for the bi, meaning two, and then nomenclature meaning a naming system. So it just means a two-word naming system. And all species on Earth will have this two-word naming system, and it's based in Latin. Here's just an illustration showing, again, how we go from kingdom down to species uh, with a bear, brown bear. So animal, you have all these different animals. And then as you go down through the different groupings, you end up with just one species. So there's certain things that come into play here that eliminate other species, so you end up with just one in the species category. And that concludes our biological classification.